Hello there and karibu sana to yet another episode of Tuesday Connect. We are so, so, so glad to have you back. Uh, in case you're new here, uh, this is literally actually the 38th episode of Tuesday Connect. Uh, so karibu sana, please hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. That means that anytime there's content, you'll be the first one to know. Wow. Uh, and trust me, by the way, we'll have a lot and a lot of content uh, out there. Great conversations, just authentic conversations about everyday life. Um, yeah, so today I'm joined by some two wonderful, wonderful uh, men. As you can see, today is a men's only uh, <laughs> kind of affair. Actually, this week was International Day of the Boy Child. Of the so Boy Child, really? Yeah, yeah. So, there <laughs> yeah. you have it, folks. We are boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, boys and stuff. And uh, I'd like to introduce them. Uh, let me begin uh, on my right uh, with MJ Gitao. Uh, I, was, I was joking with him earlier as we were just talking and asking him if the J stands for Jogona. Uh, he confirmed that it doesn't, <laughs> all right? Uh, but MJ Gitao is one of our congregants here. Uh, he's in the corporate sector. He's been there for about almost 20 years, years actually, and, years. and we'll come back yeah. to that. He's a family man. Uh, he's very involved uh, here at Mamlaka. In fact, he teaches one of our you know, our primary to our counseling classes. Uh, and so it does a wonderful, wonderful job there. So Karibu Sana, MJ. Thank you. Uh, really, really glad to be here. We've tried to get you here uh, for some time. Okay. So finally. I'll come. I you wait know? for International Boys Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes, Karibu yes. Sana, Karibu Sana. Um, and on my left is somebody that you probably already know. Uh, this is our senior pastor, Mamlaka Hill Chapel. His name is uh, Sam Ithiga. I will not say his uh, nickname here. Uh, I care about... <laughs> You know, I, I, want to, I want to keep my job, uh, but it's, it's good to have him uh, here, uh, senior pastor, really, really, really cool boss. I, I mean that. Uh, and, and it's wonderful to have him here. So in the past, in the recent past, we've, we've been talking about a couple of things and um, through the book of Acts, just doing a character study. And, and actually just this past weekend, uh, we talked about uh, a couple called Ananias and Sapphira. You probably know the story in Acts chapter 5 about this couple who sold some land and, you know, they, they kind of lied about how much they got. They brought, out, uh, they brought up some, some of the proceeds and said, this is the whole amount. And, and God judged them for that. And that actually prompted us to do this um, episode uh, and talk about a particular issue that is very crucial and, and very important, I think, and very pertinent to all of us. And that's the whole issue of lying uh, and the whole issue of truth-telling. Um, and so let me start with MJ. You have been in the corporate sector for nearly 20 years. Yes. Uh, just from your own perspective, uh, where do you see us as a culture? How are things, uh, as you see them, um, paint for us a picture as, as best as you see it? Okay. Yeah. Um, th thank you, Ted. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been in the uh, corporate sector for, for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, my background is finance and banking, so those, yep. those are the sectors in which I've, I've served and mm -hmm. worked. Yep. Um, and I guess the, the issue applies in, in many other corporate uh, areas where the whole issue of how you present yourself, mm -hmm. the kind of perception that you drive across your colleagues, your bosses, uh, your peers, even your competitors, yep. really is the thing that gets you, gets your head. You know, gets you that promotion, gets you that contract. Um, so, so while we were just thinking about this, the someone you mentioned that I was shared here a couple of weeks ago prompted, you know, uh, th th this this issue in my mind. I remember reading one of the um, uh, Tuesday newspapers because Tuesday is when they profile business and financial news, which which is what I do. And the article was asking about um, uh, when, why honesty sometimes does not always pay. Mm. Uh, the story was based on, uh, on an investment fund where the managers of this investment fund just basically told the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And that, you know, got them into trouble. Uh, so clients, you know, withdrew their money. So the story asks, you know, did that investment fund really have to tell uh, the truth and to be honest? Uh, and so it was just put in that doubt that there can be certain instances where you can either withhold information, tell as little information as possible for the time being, essentially just being economical with, with the truth. When mm -hmm. it's likely being economical with the truth is likely to get your head. Yeah. So, so in that, that I think is, is a common culture, uh, common practice. Uh, but it's not just, just in that area, you know, as, as you said, I'm a family man, I'm blessed uh, with, with one wife. Yeah, if I can, but uh, one wife. I can stick to that yeah. line that he said on these podiums. Yeah. Uh, and two boys, yeah. uh, nine, nine years and ten years. Oh, wow. so, so, and I just want to pivot because the other day I was reading a, a story in the National Geographic. Mm -hmm. uh, I have it here. The cover was Why We Lie. Okay. 
And the story talks about they were doing an experiment uh, among children, mm -hmm. just trying to find out, you know, to what degree, have, at what age, mm -hmm. children start to come up with, and you know, the whole idea of presenting uh, a different perception. Mm -hmm. So they hid toys you know, on a small table like this. They put um, Barney, the dinosaur, which um, us guys didn't grow up with Barney, but yeah. our children are growing <laughs> up with Barney. Yeah, yeah. It's color purple, so it's, it's a little dinosaur that's color purple. So the person doing the experiment hid Barney and covered it with a, with a cloth. Uh, they lied and walked away that they were going to take a phone call, but before they walked out of the room, they told the kids gathered in the room mm -hmm. that whoever guesses the right uh, toy or um, item hidden will get some amount of money, call it ten dollars. So the, without uncovering it. Without uncovering okay. it, of course. Okay. So the guy walks out, uh, spends a few minutes, comes back and asks the kid who has guessed the right thing. And this little girl raises her hand up and says, it's actually uh, Bunny the dinosaur. So mm -hmm. the guy asks, how did you know? So the girl comes in front, mm -hmm. feels the, the, the doll, which is still covered and says, I feel this doll is color purple. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, exactly how do you feel like a we, color? We didn't know, we didn't know we have those superpowers. <laughs> exactly, powers. you know, I can feel this, you know? I can feel this pouch is color <laughs> green and it's right? covered. Mm, yeah. so, so the article talks about how children and human beings at that age start developing this capacity for ingenuity, mm -hmm. the ability to manage perceptions. And in the article, they say that is an indicator that the brain capacity is actually growing when it's able to enable this child uh, to create a different perception that yeah. she actually guessed the right thing, yet she actually snuck and checked when the guy was outside the room. So, so but I think that's an issue that we can also address because it shows that while our own body and brain is also just uh, developing, there's room for us to fill that with, with some Christian perspective, which I know we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. Yeah. But it's not all just in the corporate scene and children. Mm -hmm. We ourselves uh, struggle yeah. with these things. Yeah. You know, there, I was telling you earlier that the other day I was waiting for a fundi to come to the house to fix something. And um, uh, the fundi, um, they're good ones, they're not so good ones. Yeah. So <laughs> the other ones tell you, I'm on my way, I'm coming. Yeah. Two hours later, he's still coming. So I got fed up, went to do my own errands, you know, fuming, this fundi is wasting my time. So the fundi calls when I'm outside the house and he says, oh, Nikonjiani na kam. So I told him, bana nime kugojea, niko hapa na kugojea, we kuja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in actual fact, I was not in the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was out doing my no own idea. things. Yeah, yeah. But I knew if I tell him I'm out doing my own things, he yeah, will even see. take another job and yeah. come later in yeah. the evening. Yeah. So. So, you know, I, I, I twisted the truth. Yeah. I was in a shopping mall doing my own errands and created a perception in the fundi that I'm actually in the house waiting. And those are the sorts of things that I think um, have come to affect us and yeah. they've sort of come, become like the acceptable lies that we need to tell yeah. in order to, to get through with life. Wow. Yeah. I think that's true, and, and you've raised some really important points, but yeah, Sam, maybe you want to chime in. Yeah, no, I was just listening to MJ, and I, and I find it interesting, you know, the article that you mentioned, uh, that the, the National Geographic said, you know, looking at the kid, that this is part of growth, mm -hmm. it's part of development, and I, I wonder whether the world sometimes does uh, sanitize some of these things, you mm -hmm. know, the, the wrongs to make them palatable, yeah. you know, call it, it's not uh, lying, it's just part of growth of the brain yeah you know it's part of survival yeah yeah survival mm -hmm. instincts yeah and we do mm -hmm. we do that a lot i think even to lying you know we use words like white lie you mm -hmm. know just white is such something pure yeah, yeah. it's not very harmful ah, you know? never we never actually yeah. thought about that we do yeah. you know, we, we do like try to make them palatable and uh i think i also have my own experiences yeah yeah uh, my own children, and, and sometimes you do want to ask the questions, where did they learn? Like, do they like, learn from us? Or, Whose children are you? You know, because you, like, my, ch my, my children, I will not mention who. Yeah. Uh, at one point, you know, I asked them, have you eaten sugar? Mm. And they're like, no. <laughs> when you look at their lips over here, you know, there are crystals <laughs> everywhere. There's evidence to suggest otherwise. <laughs> and yeah. you have, and, and, and I think very early on, we were forced to begin to teach our children. Mm. Two things that will get you in trouble in this house. Yeah. Disobedience and lying. And lying, yeah. And once yeah. children learn, you know, those two things, I think you put them on a foundation mm -hmm. to succeed. Yeah. I, I myself do struggle with lying. Mm -hmm. And so it's true. Oh, what you do? MJ. Goodness. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, well, we, we, <laughs> and you are lying yeah. right now. You I know, right? <laughs> 
creating uh, perception. Yeah, yeah. But I find it to be one of those things uh, that you almost quite want to do naturally. Yeah. For example, I could be going somewhere and I'm late. And along the way, I begin to mm. rationalize, to, yeah. just, to create yeah. justifications, to try yeah. to save face yeah. of why it is that I'm, I'm late. Mm. I know the reason is I was just I was lazy. I just woke up late. Yeah. I, I didn't manage my time well. Uh, instead of being quick, I went to my phone, you know, and you, you know, but that will not be accepted yeah. where I'm going. So I begin to come up with these reasons why I'm late. Mm -hmm. So you're like the small child. <coughs> <laughs> it is international boys. Yeah. <laughs> but you know? Yeah. 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 And can you even imagine, like, at a going, like, say, going, going to work and mm. you're late, yeah. right? Yeah. And then your boss asks you, so why are you late? And you say, well, I was watching a series yesterday and uh, I ended up sleeping at 3 a.m. And so. I woke up at 8, so that's why I'm late. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's way more convenient to actually, so you know, <laughs> it's way more convenient to say, uh, I mean, what you will not imagine the traffic. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. construction on Waiyaki. Yeah, I don't know what's guys, happening to our I don't know what's happening days. to yeah. our country. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Why are they putting this GR smack in the middle <laughs> of the city? And that's, yes. You don't even have your you backs right. Exactly. Kumbo yeah. Kong or something, you know? Um, and, and I'd like us to maybe just uh, probe into that a little bit. Um, and I think, Sam, you've started us off on that. Um, how did we find ourselves here? Like, where, where did this whole culture of, of, of lying uh, sort of um, just come about? Like, what are some of the explanations maybe uh, that, that we can think about? Yeah. Well, um, I'm just trying to imagine what the world will tell us, you know, following from, let's say, what some of these uh, natural scientists and those guys say. Yeah. You know, they will tell us this is part of evolution. It's part of how we survive, you know, survival for the fittest. Yeah. And telling those white lies, fibs, whatever you might want to call them, mm -hmm. the guys who are able to, 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 to tell that they survive, they're able to mm -hmm. get their way off things that could hurt them and so on. Now, I don't think it's part of evolution. I think it's when we go to the scriptures, for us, the Christians, we see where lying came from. Mm -hmm. We are introduced there in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent in the garden, you know, mm -hmm. and Eve is deceived. And the serpent comes and says, did God really say you should not eat the fruit in the middle of the garden? You know, you will not surely die and so on. And he begins to introduce lies, which uh, Eve and Adam believe. And later on, uh, the world was broken and torn apart. And as, as, as Jesus Christ will say later on, we are like our father, <laughs> you know, yeah. the devil. You know, because the devil is the father of all lies. And when he lies, he speaks his native language. And I think over time we have learned to speak mm -hmm. Satan's language, yeah. you know, you know, telling lies here and there in order mm -hmm. to survive, save face, get out of trouble, yeah. and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. I would say, I would put it, the genesis of this is uh, really at the garden, mm -hmm. at the fall, the fall of man. Satan, the father of lies, deceiving us and us following after his footsteps. Yeah. Yeah. The Genesis is in Genesis. Uh, three, <laughs> you know, How incredibly observant you are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was lying there. I had to pick it up. So mm -hmm. MJ, do you no, chime I in? mean, just to, to um, add to what um, uh, Sama said, you know, we, we kind of try to twist, delay, yeah. repackage the truth mm -hmm. in order to get ourselves out of this, this yeah. sort of situations. And for me, it's, it's not so much an issue of, you know, did you rob a bank, yes or no? Mm -hmm. It's in those instances where you really feel you're either going to be grossly inconvenienced, yeah. it's going to cost you money if you tell the full, plain, simple truth, or it's going to deny you that contract, like I said earlier, that yeah. promotion. Yeah. You're driving to a party and you forgot to put on your seatbelt, and yeah. that's the day their scurry decides to peep yeah. in traffic. You know, yeah. in traffic, that's when they come and they say, hey, MJ, I own a seatbelt, you know, what happened? Yeah. I remember the other day, you know, the curfews were on, and like he said, you know, I, I was just late. I was yeah. careless in management, yeah. managing my time, so the um, police officer stopped us past the curfew time. Mm -hmm. I had dropped our children to their grandmother mm -hmm. the afternoon earlier. Yeah. So at that time, 8 p.m., I said, no, 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 I'm going drop a toto in their grandmother's house. So, you know, you're, you're taking a certain context yeah. and using it now mm -hmm. in order to just get yourself out of trouble. So, so like, like Pasi said, you know, that that whole thing we inherited from from that that story in Genesis chapter three, I think, still afflicts us up to today, yeah. where you want to just 
twist the truth a little bit yeah. to save yourself and get yourself out yeah. of a, what would yeah. have been and a And the culture situation. is also really built upon that deception. Like, um, I'm trying to imagine what we see on TV. Um, we've been lied to that uh, we have to fake it mm -hmm. till we make it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, nowadays when young people are watching TV, you feel like pulling them aside and telling them, don't believe everything you watch mm -hmm. on no screens. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if it's, for example, the music video. Yeah. I remember growing up watching those hip hop yeah. and those hip hop stars, you know, with all their gold teeth, you know, and, and all these big cars, mm -hmm. you know, and the bling bling chain you know, making you think that they're living that life. Mm. And all that stuff is hired. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> the guy's going to an SQ after that. <laughs> They've hired all this, they, they don't yeah. own this, thing. but fake it yeah. till you make it, you know, create this impression mm. that you're actually doing very well. And, and then people begin to respect you. Mm. And people begin to respect you, that will open more doors for you to gain more income and so on. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the, the sort of like the motto, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, mm -hmm. you know, fake it, till you make it or give white lies to get yourself out of trouble and we are building a culture you know that is the foundation is really lies mm -hmm. and, and little wonder there is so much falling apart today Absolutely. you know because yeah. once the foundation is not solid mm -hmm. yeah yeah things will fall apart true true yeah. um so should we should we like accept that this is where we are at um should we just like what what would be a way forward like do we just accept that this is part of our reality and it's impossible to change because I think, as you, you guys said, it, it's we, we live in a culture where it's becoming increasingly hard mm -hmm. to and costly, actually, yeah. very costly, to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so, should we just accept that that's our reality? And like, yeah, yeah, uh, accept. Yes, um, I wanted, I wanted to add uh, to what um, yeah, uh, Sam said before addressing that around um, the example he gave. I think increasingly, you know, the the world is teaching us to be less authentic. Mm -hmm. Uh, because not telling the truth is 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 being less authentic. You know, just mm -hmm. admitting that I was late to work because I didn't manage my time properly. Yeah. I was driving past curfew because I didn't watch my clock. Uh, so where you're really being forced to be less authentic. Mm -hmm. um, should we accept it? To, to you accept it to the degree of knowing the kind of problem you want to address. Because I say, you know, once you admit an issue, then you know how to to solve it and and and, and to address it. So I think we, we should, but I think the, the, the important thing for us, you know, Christians is accepting it is just by the beginning. We need to really shine a spotlight in terms of what does the Bible tell us about, um, you know, uh, truth telling. You know, the example you, 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 you give about an, Ananias and Sapphira, you know, there were consequences to, to what they did. They uh, sold a plot of land for, I don't know, 100K if you want to use a random figure, and they went to church and they said, we only sold it for 50K. Um, the consequences were, were quite deadly. Uh, no, no pun intended. <laughs> so, it be there, yeah. um, so, so we accept it to the degree of knowing how to address it, uh, how to shine a spotlight on it, and uh, there, there are numerous biblical examples to show that if you don't tell the truth, even when it really costs oh. you something. There, there'll be very severe consequences. So, um, you know, for people like us in professional services, you, you, you tell the truth, it costs your promotion or it costs your contract, but God is always faithful to, to come and, 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 and remind you much, much later. Yeah. 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 That's a, I think that's a, such a good point um, that we are actually becoming less authentic um, as human beings. And there's a way in which I think, as you're saying, uh, truth builds us up and, and makes us reflect more and more of God's image, yeah. uh, while lying actually makes us, in a sense, subhuman uh, yeah. over time, yeah. you know, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the standard for me that I use that's drawn from, from the Bible is in Philippians, where, where it talks about, you know, taking the interest of the other person more important than mine. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm, I'm, you know, in a tricky situation, uh, the fundi has told me I'm on my way, mm -hmm. and I mean, I've gotten out of, out of the house just to, to make use of my time rather than sit there waiting for him. When I tell him I'm here at home and I'm not, mm -hmm. am I putting his interest first mm -hmm. or my interest first? Yeah. And, and, and the Bible is very clear around how we as Christians ought to treat other people, you know, considering their interest more important than, than ours because it's an example that Christ set for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he put our interest first as seen as before his. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Sam. Man, well, I, first of all, I feel like we should not settle uh, for the status quo mm -hmm. because everyone is, is, is lying around us. Therefore, mm -hmm. I guess it's okay to lie because everybody does it. I think if we 
accept that then we have no hope. Our society shall collapse and yet we, we could do something about it. Yeah. Um, for one, I feel like we should uh, take scripture seriously. Mm -hmm. We should go back to the author of life, you know, and find out how does he intend for us to live. And we should take his counsel very seriously. And this is what the Lord says. And allow me to read this, yeah. uh, Ephesians chapter... Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. It says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Well, I like that whole word for each of you must put off falsehood. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, okay, you weigh the situation, uh, see whether, no, you must put off falsehood. Mm. You know, uh, so the Lord has certain imperatives you know, for mm -hmm. us. And... Um, we just need to read the scriptures and find out that the people who lived a life of lying, mm. they either got hurt themselves or they hurt others. Yeah. You know, Abraham is one of those examples. You know, we see him lying in Genesis and sometimes some people say, look, it's not as if God said anything about his lying. Mm. But God didn't have to say anything. We just see the consequences either in Abraham's own life or mm. the life of, of the people around him. Uh, his son, for example, did copy him. Mm. You know, the whole idea of lying that, you know, my wife is not my wife, it's my sister. Yeah. The son ended up copying mm -hmm. the father. You know, and sometimes uh, I know parents uh, do raise children in a certain way. You give them rules and instructions, but you live differently. Mm. Well, you find out that actually your children, uh, yeah. you know, they will follow <laughs> not necessarily what <laughs> yeah. you say, but yeah. what you do. What you do. Yeah. <laughs> what you do. Yeah. So if you are the person who lies there on, and children are always listening, you know, you say, si <laughs> but you're here insisting. Yes. You know. On the phone you're lying, but you're insisting on children to tell yeah. you the truth. Yeah. They now know, ah, this whole truth thing, uh, it's, it's neither here nor yeah, yeah, there. You know. Yeah. you know, so Abraham's son did copy him in lying, mm -hmm. and, and, and it almost cost him his own life. Yeah. And he did hurt the people around him. Abimelech was hurt. Pharaoh was hurt by mm -hmm. Abraham's lies. I think earlier on we were talking and MJ did bring up the idea of uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph refused to cheat. Mm. It's interesting how <laughs> <laughs> what he was being told to do. Yeah, pun intended. Yeah, you know, <laughs> to exactly. To yeah. With, with Potiphar's wife. Yeah. But he refused. Mm. You know, he was an honest man and he wanted to honor his, 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 master. his master. He said, what, I cannot do this thing to my God. Mm. You know? And of mm -hmm. course, he meant also Potiphar. Yeah. It got him into trouble telling the truth. But look, sure. truth has its own blessings. Because God was able to use even that misfortune yeah. to take him to a very high position in society <laughs> later on. Uh, telling lies and white lies has its curses. Saul is one of those people. You know? uh, he was told, he was given an assignment to do. You know? uh, he, he never did it fully. And when he was confronted, instead of coming clean and saying, look, I messed up, he tried to cover it up. Yeah. You know, and that cost him the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, the other person was, um, who was it in the scriptures? Uh, um, well, Ananias and Sapphira, I think yeah. we mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. You know, the, their lives were lost because mm -hmm. of half-truths, yeah. you know, which is really a full lie. And so I think there are incidences in the scriptures that teach us, if you choose to live a deceitful life, there will be a great cost uh, to it. Uh, and then truth is always rewarded. Yeah. And is it, isn't it not interesting that <coughs> lying is associated with Satan and truth, Christ? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ would come and say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, it means something. Yeah. You know, uh, the side of truth is really the side of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these are things I think we need to think about yeah. uh, uh, clearly. If you claim to be in the light, to be walking in the light, and yet you are dishonest, mm. you are uh, not truthful, instinctively lies keep coming out of your mouth, yeah. then I think you need to ask yourself very deep questions about whether your heart has really been changed. Mm. <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because out of the fullness of the heart, does the mouth speak? And if, you're, if lying mm. comes out like this, mm. then ask yourself, has my heart truly been changed? And if your heart has not been changed, then you probably are not working with the Lord. And I think that should make you make you, you know, think yeah. twice yeah. about I mean, your destiny. The example of, of, of King um, Saul, mm -hmm. if you can extend that uh, a bit further, yeah. uh, has several dimensions to it. So he was given a clear command uh, by God through Samuel, mm -hmm. uh, go to Amalekites, do not spare anything, yeah. uh, kill everything, but 
um, whatever got into his head, he brought back some animals. So when mm. Samuel asks him, and, and, and what's that I'm hearing? <laughs> Bli <laughs> bleating behind the studio. <laughs> yeah. uh, he yeah. starts to um, uh, lie in the sense of wishing to explain it yeah. away, Rationalization. rationalizing it. Yeah. Uh, so like the child who feels color purple. <laughs> um, yeah. And secondly, to shift responsibility and, and blame is not the right word, but shift responsibility. So he says, no, yes, I was told to kill everything, but I brought the fattest cows and sheep yeah. in order we could Sacrifice. offer them. Yeah. So he tries to rationalize yeah. it. You know, this, to, is what, to, this, this is for, for the you. Lord. Exactly, this this is for, for the Lord, Lord so you <laughs> can excuse it. Yeah. You know? And then number two, once that does not get him uh, uh, out of trouble by Samuel, uh, he says, no, it's actually my this soldiers, man, this man, yeah. who, who, these men who, who brought yeah. these things. Yeah. So, so, so for me, that, that's, I think, the, the biggest issue that I think we, we can um, uh, speak to using Christian principles, that, you know, you were saying earlier that just tell the plain truth yeah. and don't start to rationalize it. Oh, ni mechelewa. Man say traffic uhuru highway squeezy bana eh in mob sana. So you see you're you're shifting the responsibility yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're you're failing to admit that, you know, you yeah, should really yeah, be telling yeah. the truth at all and, times. And the reason for that mm -hmm. I think and I think we need to say it clearly is yeah. that truth has its cost. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Truth is also costly. Mm -hmm. But if you think truth is costly, try lying. Try lying. You know, and sometimes lying looks like it will save you for now. It can be advantageous in the interim. Yeah. In the interim, but, but in the long run, in the long run, yeah. You know, that house of cards will come, will come crumbling mm. down. You no, know, crumbling down. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you'll have to support the lie with another with lie, another. with another lie. Yeah. But the thing is, the truth always comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth will always come out. Yeah. Uh, so people say the truth shall set you free. Sometimes it doesn't set you free. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look know. at look at uh, Joseph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and Christ Himself was killed for standing yeah. the truth. You know, He could not deny Himself. Yeah. Uh, but God does reward truthfulness in the end, and I think this is important even for couples, for example. And and I know we've not talked a lot about relationships, but this comes up in relationships mm -hmm. where somebody feels that they need they don't have to tell their spouse the complete truth because they fear that if they say the truth, there will be some sort of consequences. consequences yeah. So to mitigate that, they cover up with a lie. But I feel like that only makes the situation worse. worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems as if it should work, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually, something will begin to stink mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. you know, and even their spouse will be more hurt mm -hmm. later on knowing that you lied to them, mm -hmm. you know, than probably how they would have been had you just said the truth from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, there's um, one friend who, we were having this discussion, and I said to them, uh, it was a time when he was really seriously thinking about mm. telling the truth or not telling the truth. And I told him, yeah. you'd rather your relationship fails on the basis of truth mm -hmm. than it stands on a foundation of a lie. Mm. Wow. And I feel like for many people, that's probably something that they're not willing to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? yeah. You'd rather your relationship fails on the basis of truth than it stands on the foundation, foundation of, of lies. lies. Yeah. Because it won't even stand for long anyway. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I hope you're really enjoying the conversation as I am right now and that you're finding this um, helpful um, and perhaps stirring your mind, uh, causing you to think, causing you to, um, you know, just investigate your own heart. And, and I'd like to wrap up this conversation by just a few concluding remarks, and I'll actually start. Um, I, I was watching uh, somebody called, he's called Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. He's become a very famous, he's a clinical psychologist, I think, um, and he's become very famous uh, for just the number of talks he's giving. Mm. And one of the things that Jordan Peterson says is words are tools to communicate reality. Mm -hmm. They are not uh, instruments of managing perception. Mm -hmm. And I think, MJ, earlier you were actually talking about managing perception. The reason we rationalize, the reason we, you know, say, no, no, it's not like that, or we say half-truths and om omissions mm -hmm. and stuff like that, uh, is because we are trying to use words to actually manage perceptions, to show ourselves to be something that we are actually currently not. Um, and, and perhaps the best thing is uh, the faster we come to terms with who we are first, uh, the easier it is even to set ourselves on a path of change. Mm. Uh, because if all I'm doing is to manage perceptions, yeah. first of all, even within myself, I begin mm. to think, I'm actually not really who I'm portraying myself mm. to be. Mm. Uh, so there's a bit of a acting or mm. you know yeah. or, or or trying to to really hide who i am mm. and that's because maybe i, I know put if people facade. find out exactly mm. put up a facade 
and maybe I'm thinking if if people really got to know me, they wouldn't love me, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't accept me as as they as they as, mm-hmm. as they should, and, and maybe that's where even the gospel comes in, mm-hmm. uh, because Jesus knows us for who we are truly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, we, we can't hide anything. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a wonder that, by the way, when we are coming to pray, we hide some things. <laughs> <laughs> You wonder, like, okay, so I can see everything. I can literally see everything. Mm. But yet at the same time, Jesus actually knowing everything still loves us. And so perhaps even just as we, because honestly, what we are calling for is, is a high standard. Yeah. Um, and as you said, truth is, 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 it can be costly. It can mm-hmm. be costly, especially in the short run. I mean, for that company, for instance, um, that, you know, lost out because they decided to be honest. Yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's a big deal. So any, any concluding remarks on, on your end? Either can start. Um, I mean, just to extend uh, on what you said, for me, two, two things. Um, just being authentic, that the person you are on the outside mm. is the person you are on the inside. And so not wanting to create a certain perception that you're, performing well and meeting your targets in the office while you're really not. Yeah. Mm. And you're using smooth talk mm. and pragmatism to just, you know, get you by. Uh, so I think it's really important to maintain that authenticity that the person you are on the outside is who you are on the inside. Mm. And that those two things are not at, at variance because you're using words mm. to create a different perception. Um, and then number two, just um, like I said earlier, you know, Christ set a very good example for us in terms of when I'm um, not telling the full truth to my spouse, mm. am I considering her interest first or am mm. considering my own interest? So yeah. I want to save my skin. Mm. I want to be in a comfortable place. I want to carry on with a bad practice. So I'm really looking after myself rather than looking after the other person. So mm. for me, I think that example that Christ set, uh, putting the interest of the other person first and then mine, secondly, should be the standard that we should adopt. Even when putting the interest of the other person by telling the whole truth will, will likely cost us something. But like we've been reminded, um, God always rewards truth-telling. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah for me, uh, what I would say is, uh, and I think it has come up mm. while you were saying, you know, when we tell lies, uh, we are really deceiving ourselves. Mm. The person we are lying to is ourselves. Mm. Uh, well, Ananias and Sapphira were told you are lying to God, but we have come to learn that really God knows everything. Mm. So yes, on the one hand, you are lying to God, but God knows everything. So you're really lying to yourself, you know? And uh, I, I, my challenge would be that we should commit ourselves to telling the truth. Mm. Because I feel like once you commit to telling the truth, a lot about you begins to change. Mm-hmm. For example, if you decide... If I go to the office late, I will say the truth. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, forces yeah, yeah. you to yeah. you not move. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 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 You will think very seriously about that. So you yeah. will because I can't give a shady mm, uh, excuse. excuse. Yes. Or, yeah. So now it forces you to do what is right. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, uh, yeah. challenge yourself to live by the truth, yeah. and you'll see how your life will change. Actually, yeah. You know, your slothfulness will change. Mm your laziness, your uh, lack of integrity, a lot of, some of those things will go away. Mm. And then if you really are a believer, then you want to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think we said here earlier that Christ really is on the side of the truth. I mean, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. life, And um, if lying is speaking Satan's native language, then if you become a truth teller, Mm -hmm. then you have learned to speak, Mm -hmm. I think, the language of God's son. Mm -hmm. And I think we should challenge ourselves then to live by the side that we are on. Mm. And not try to cover up uh, lying by calling it those nice names, white It's just a white lie. Mm -hmm. It's just Mm -hmm. to see it for the ugliness that it is and to put it aside and to embrace truth with all its its effects, both good or or, or, or bad. Bad, Be willing to live on that side matter what befalls. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, I think this was a meaningful and a helpful conversation. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, And uh, just to mention that actually today is the second last 
episode of this season, season three. I hope you find this uh, helpful. We've come to the end of this episode, uh, but please remember that next week we'll have a live session. So please feel free to send your questions to the email uh, just down here, right here, okay? Send your questions there uh, from not just this episode, but any other episode in the season. We'd love to have your questions addressed as best as we can. So until then, Kwaheri. Well,